Hi, this is Dr. Todd Cooperman, president and founder of ConsumerLab.com, which has been testing all types of supplements and healthy foods since 1999. I'm here to talk today about our recent tests of psyllium husk supplements, which are also sold as uh, over-the-counter uh, products as well as foods. Um, and now psyllium is a really kind of amazing um, uh, fiber, uh, and I'll explain why in a moment. But in our tests, I should note that we found all the fiber in these products, but we also found contaminants in, in products. Uh, and I want to explain to you kind of the good, the bad, the ugly of psyllium, uh, starting really with first with, you know, why did people even use psyllium in the first place? Well, the reason is that psyllium, which is a plant that actually, this product has an image of it. It's, it's mainly grown in India. Uh, it's a plant that has a seed and around that seed is a husk. That husk is 90% fiber and that fiber uh, is 80% soluble fiber, which means that in your body it actually absorbs water and becomes a gel. And that gel has some very unique properties. First of all, that gel, um, uh, in addition to bringing in water, it, that creates fullness in your, in your stomach. Um, so it can help with a, kind of as, as an appetite suppressant. It has not yet actually been shown to actually cause weight loss though. That gel also um, will allow you to better regulate blood sugar levels if you have type 2 diabetes. Um, it will also help reduce cholesterol levels. And, and this is actually a, an approved health claim by the FDA uh, that psyllium can help in this, in this manner. The main reason people use psyllium, however, is as a laxative because that soluble fiber um, is a stool softener um, and it's a bulk laxative as well. Um, so it's very effective uh, as a laxative if it's used properly, and I'll get to that as well. Now, before we go any further, I want to explain that there are different types of psyllium that's sold basically in different forms. Um, one form is simply as the husk, and that's shown here. It's kind of a, a light, kind of um, uh, somewhat kind of fluffy uh, um, material. Now, if they grind this down more, it becomes psyllium powder. It's really the same thing, however, the powder is more dense because there's less air in it. As a result, if you're going to be using psyllium, this is important, um, one tablespoon of the uh, psyllium husk is equal to one teaspoon of the psyllium powder. Both give you five grams of psyllium. And some powders are, are, are a little more coarsely ground, such as this one, uh, kind of an, an intermediate between these two. You can also get psyllium as a, a capsule, which contain either, can contain either the powder or, or the husk itself, um, and that will dictate how much you need to take. Um, now, when you use psyllium, if you're going to be mixing this into a water or a liquid, which is how most people uh, use it, it's important to drink it right away, and I'll show you why that, why that is. Um, so we're going to put in um, about a tablespoon of uh, the psyllium husk into water, mix it around. Now you want to drink this uh, pretty soon after you've made it, after you've mixed it. Here's how it looks, kind of very liquid. In a few minutes, however, it begins to gel. Um, here's an example of what it looks like after, say, uh, an hour or so. Very uh, gelatinous. Um, you don't want to drink it this way. You want to drink it uh, soon after you've made it. So keep that in mind. Now in terms of when to take psyllium, um, it depends on how you're going to be using it. If you're using it as a laxative, many people like to take it in the morning. Um, gravity may help it kind of move through your system as well at that point. Um, and you'll want to take about one, say one, if you're using the husk, say one tablespoon up to three tablespoons. So you can do that one tablespoon up to three times per day. Um, Again, if you're using it, the powder, you would be using less. If you're using it, however, to uh, lower cholesterol, you want to take it with a meal. Uh, otherwise, it won't be that effective. If you're using it to uh, suppress your appetite, again, you either want to take it slightly before the meal um, or with a meal as well. Now, a problem that we found in testing these psyllium products was lead contamination. And this is a known problem with psyllium. In fact, in the state of California, uh, any product that contains more than half a microgram of lead per daily serving has to have a warning label on it. And there have been many cases as a result in California. Um, we found as much as 11 micrograms of lead uh, per serving in 
uh, one of these products, and then kind of levels going down from there all the way down to about 0.4 micrograms of lead. Um, so there, lead is really an issue with, with psyllium. Um, and in fact, five out of these eight products didn't pass our tests due to lead. Uh, among those that did, we, those were the approved products in our testing, one of which is our top pick for really having the least lead, sold at a very reasonable price as well, very good instructions on it. Again, that information is in our report on Consumer Lab. If you remember, you can, you can access that. It's critical that you use lots of water when you're taking psyllium because, as I showed, it absorbs water. In fact, it absorbs at least 10 times its weight in water. You want to take it with about at least 8 ounces of water per, for, per tablespoon of the psyllium husk. Um, you also want to drink more water afterwards. If you take too much psyllium, uh, it can actually cause diarrhea. If you take uh, psyllium without the water that I mentioned, um, it can actually cause constipation. So be aware of that. Also be aware that the, that the viscous uh, soluble fiber can also uh, decrease the absorption or slow the absorption of some medications. Um, so if you're, taking it, if you're taking medications, take the medication at least an hour before you take psyllium or four hours after you've taken psyllium. And you should consult with your doctor if you're going to be using psyllium and you're taking medication. Some people also have allergies to psyllium. It's uh, probably more common among people who've been exposed to it in the past, such as nurses who may have administered psyllium multiple times to patients over the years. Um, cases like that have been reported. Also, if you have trouble swallowing, you probably don't want to take psyllium as a capsule, um, just in case it can get stuck in your throat, um, and then it could, it could ex potentially expand and cause a blockage. So if you have trouble swallowing pills, better off taking psyllium mixed uh, in a liquid. So again, this is Dr. Todd Cooperman with ConsumerLab.com. All of this information and a lot more, as well as our top picks and product-by-product product, uh, results, are in our report on ConsumerLab.com.